Right, this should be a fun one. We're going to look at the organs of the thorax. So when we say thorax, we think chest. Chest is really a larger area. And even if we think thoracic cage, the thorax is a space within that because the thoracic cage, as I think we'll probably see, also covers some of the abdomen. So we're gonna open this model up, work our way down through it, look at all the organs we can find, orient those organs, see what, you know, because I, I think this is the thing about anatomy, like I know there's a heart in there, I know there's two lungs in there, but where are they exactly? And, and how, what, what shapes are they? And how do they all fit together? That's what we're gonna do. And we'll also look at the great vessels. We'll pick out some nerves that appear and bits and bobs like that. All right? Everybody's always taller than me. Um, now for some, this will be very new, and for some, this will be revisionary. This is the sort of talk I think a second year medical student could give pretty easily. So if you're in that situation, as we go through these structures, think, you know, if, if you think you should know this stuff, see if you do, see if you could give this talk. Uh, and if there are areas where you're not so strong on, those are areas to work on, aren't they? Right, okay. So what is the thorax then, or the thoracic cavity? Well. So this is the thoracic cage. We have 12 ribs on either side. We have a bunch of thoracic vertebrae. There's a clavicle here. And inside here um, is a space. So the thoracic cage is made up of the bones and the muscles and the skin and the other bits and bobs that are forming this wall. Now we have an opening here at the top superiorly and we have an opening here at the bottom inferiorly. So this gets called, well, it gets called a few names because anatomy can be a bit awkward, but this is the superior thoracic aperture. That's a nice tidy name. This is the inferior thoracic aperture. Uh, so up here, things go in and out. And down here, we have the diaphragm. So it's the diaphragm that's separating off the thoracic cavity from the abdominal cavity. And a few things pass through the diaphragm, but the diaphragm, you know, when, because you guys probably sat there quite relaxed and you're breathing with your diaphragm. And when your diaphragm is relaxed, it's a dome shape. And then when it contracts, it flattens and increases the volume in the thoracic cavity decreases the pressure and brings air in. But that means that the diaphragm is like a dome shape pushing up, up here. So the ribs and the thoracic cage is actually covering part of the abdomen. Um, it's not all thorax. So the thoracic cavity then is possibly a little smaller than you think. So let's have a look. Here's the sternum with its different parts here. So let's see what's deep to the sternum. Let's try and keep that in mind as we, as we go, all right? Okay, so sternum, ribs, abdominal musculature. If we pop this anterior wall off, here's the diaphragm here then. Here's the liver, here's the stomach. So can you see, look, there's the ribs here. Can you see how high the liver is in the body. Let's put this back in place. Look, there's the sternum up here. Here are the ribs around here. So if the sternum is there, the heart is deep to the sternum, the lungs are on either side, the diaphragm extends up and the liver is down here, all right? So this is all abdominal stuff. This is abdominal cavity. So the liver is in the abdominal cavity. We're not interested in that right now. Um, and the thoracic cavity is then divided up into further spaces. So in the center here, where the heart is, and a few things we can't see, the heart is surrounded by pericardium, a connective tissue, kind of holding it in place and helping it move and things like that. Um, and the great vessels here, they're in a space or a region of the thorax that we call the mediastinum or mediastinum, whatever you like. And that space then gets subdivided into different bits of mediastinum, superior, inferior, and so on. Now, here's the heart. You can see that the lungs are actually very thin anteriorly. So everything is packed into the space available to it. There's no there are no gaps. If there are any gaps here, they're filled with fat in life. So the lungs are filling these little spaces that they can between the heart and the thoracic cage. So in fact, to, need, to see the whole heart, we're going to need to remove 
parts of the lungs. And now we can see the heart. And, you know, there's a common saying that the heart is on the left side. Well, what you can see is, you can see that it's actually central in the thorax, but it projects to the left. Now, the heart has four chambers. It has two atria, superiorly, which are receiving blood. The right side of the heart receives blood from the body. The left side of the heart receives blood from the lungs. So we have two atria superiorly. And if I take this off then, we can see there's the right atrium and the left atrium is up here, these smaller spaces. So they're receiving blood. And then down here are the two ventricles and the ventricles are pumping blood out of the heart. So the, the right ventricle is sending blood to the lungs and the left ventricle is sending blood around the body. So the left ventricle tends to have a thicker muscular wall because it has a much bigger job to do. And you can see then that the left ventricle is on the left and the right ventricle is on the right. But can you notice how, Ooh, where's my thing? If we consider where the sternum is and what, an, what is anterior, this chamber here, this anterior chamber, is the, the right ventricle. And the left ventricle is then over to the left and pushing into the lung there. I just say that because a blow to the sternum then is likely to, it's more likely to damage the right ventricle than any other part of the heart. So just considering that orientation and how it's twisted is useful. So that's the heart. Cool, good. Maybe we'll do the blood vessels, then we'll come back to the lungs. Blood vessels, what can we see? Well, we can see the great, oh, I can see a little vessel as well. We can see the great vessels. That's really cool, I don't think I knew that was there. Um, we can see these three big vessels, really, really big, because of course the heart is the pump of the circuitry system. So it's receiving all that blood and sending it on again constantly. So the biggest blood vessels to be found are attached to the heart. And then as those blood vessels get further from the heart, they get smaller and smaller. So the three are, on the right here, we have the superior vena cava. If there's a superior vena cava, there must be an inferior vena cava. Um, we have the aorta. The aorta is the huge vessel leaving the left ventricle of the heart and taking all that blood off around the body. And it has some important branches up here. And this is the pulmonary trunk. So the pulmonary trunk, it's blue, it's an artery, but it's carrying deoxygenated blood to the lungs. So don't get, don't get confused by the color. So an artery is a blood vessel going away from the heart. A vein is a blood vessel going to the heart, in essence, right? So the reason these are red and blue is because they're carrying well oxygenated blood or poorly oxygenated blood. Um, so the superior vena cava is carrying poorly oxygenated blood from around the body into the right side of the heart. And then the right ventricle sends that poorly oxygenated blood into the lungs where it becomes well oxygenated. So the, the pulmonary trunk, you can see posteriorly it splits into two, into left and right pulmonary arteries, which then give off smaller branches straight away. And those pulmonary arteries take the blood to the lungs. And then inferiorly, we see these red pulmonary veins. So these are the veins carrying highly oxygenated blood from the lungs back to the heart. And they're carrying that blood into the left atrium. So the left atrium is posterior to all of these other structures that we've been looking at. There's the left atrium up there, right? So those are the great vessels. Now, okay, so if we do, right, so if that's the superior vena cava, that's the inferior vena cava. So the inferior vena cava is running up, the liver surrounds it, it passes up through the diaphragm superiorly, and then because the heart is sat on the diaphragm, that inferior vena cava goes straight into the right atrium. So the inferior vena cava, superior vena cava. We can see more. The superior vena cava is being formed by these two blood vessels here. They come together and form the superior vena cava. These are the brachiocephalic veins. Brachium, upper limb, arm, uh, cephalic of the head. So the brachiocephalic veins are draining blood from the head and neck and the upper limbs. 
Um, and these are coming through that superior thoracic aperture I was talking about. And in fact, you can see how we have the subclavian vein from the upper limb and the internal jugular vein from the head and neck, and there's the external jugular vein there, coming together to form those brachiocephalic veins. Uh, so the inferior vena cava is over to the right, and you can see the way the, the brachiocephalic veins are arranged for that anatomy to happen. The aorta then, whink, the aorta is, it's got this amazing curve. So it curves from right to left, but it also curves to run from kind of in the middle of the thoracic cavity to the posterior wall. And then it's running down posteriorly. Here's the esophagus here. Um, sending blood to the thoracic cage, but working its way down to the, the abdomen. Um, but as it curves around here, it gives off three branches. And can you see how the arteries are deeper than the veins? This is a bit of a trend throughout the body. But this artery here, which is deep to the brachiocephalic veins, is the brachiocephalic trunk. There's only one brachiocephalic trunk or brachiocephalic artery, or used to be called the innominate artery. That runs, that's the first, well, I say the first, that's the first big branch. That runs from the arch of the aorta over to the right, and again, brachiocephalic. That's going to give off the common carotid artery, which is running up the neck, and it's going to supply blood to the, the brain, the face, the neck, and that sort of thing. And here's the subclavian artery coming out here. So the subclavian artery, or the right subclavian artery, and the right common carotid artery come from the brachiocephalic trunk. And then as we continue around, what we should see, we see two vessels two vessels branching from the arch of the aorta. And the first one, so if I take off the internal jugular vein, there you go, the first branch is the common carotid artery running up the neck and into the head and brain. And the second branch is the left subclavian artery running off to the left upper limb. So brachiocephalic artery, left common carotid artery, left subclavian artery, and then it continues around. So we can see those really clearly. The other thing I, I spotted that I could see, the true first branches of the aorta are the coronary arteries, right? So you know that the, the heart has coronary arteries supplying blood to the muscle of the, of the heart. And we can see here the, the origin of the right coronary artery from the aorta as soon as it leaves the heart. That's really, really cool. And we can see a number of other structures in the heart here, but there's a whole other video on the heart. Go and look at that one, because you can talk, you can talk about the heart for half an hour, no bother. Um, but you get, you get the idea. So there's the heart. So if we remove the heart, how about we put the lungs back in? Okay, kind of. Okay, so the lungs then, are filling as much space in the thoracic cavity as they can. Um, and the left lung then has a little bit less space because the heart is pushing into the left there, as we saw. And the right lung has three lobes, upper, middle, and lower lobes. And the left lung has two lobes, upper and lower, or lowers there, you can see. So this line here is the oblique fissure and the oblique fissure then is separating the upper lobe from the lower lobe. We've got two separate lobes and that, that fissure goes in deep. Um, so you can actually you know, pull those two lobes apart if we had a real lung. Um, and the upper lobe and the lower lobe, then the upper lobe is very anterior and the lower lobe, you've got to imagine that oblique fissure spiraling around posteriorly. That lower lobe is actually very posterior. So if you wanted to listen to it, you'd need to listen to it posteriorly. Um, to be sure you were getting to it. And the right lung then has a f horizontal fissure and an oblique fissure separating the upper lobe, middle lobe and lower lobe. And same deal, the lower lobe is very much posterior, the upper lobe is anterior. All right then, so the lungs are taking up most of the space in the thorax that we have. Um, if we take the anterior parts of the lungs off, we can see the airway. So this is another big part of the thorax, right? Here we've got the trachea, 
The trachea is the main airway, the windpipe. So this is running down from the larynx in the neck uh, and it bifurcates, it divides into two. Uh, it divides into two main bronchi, the left and the right. Uh, and this point here gets called the carina, where it divides. Um, and then you can see those main bronchi running into the lungs. And as soon as they get into the lungs, they divide into lobar bronchi, a lobar bronchi of each of the lobes, and then they branch, 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 and the blood vessels follow them. It's like, a, the airway is like a tree, you know, and a tree is kind of doing, it's doing the same thing, isn't it? A tree is trying to maximize its surface area. It's trying to spread those leaves out as far as it can. And that's the same thing that's happening in the lungs, essentially, is that we have all this branching to as many air spaces as possible to give as much surface area as possible between the, the gas space and the capillaries to maximize gaseous exchange. Okay, so if we take the trachea and the bronchi away, we can see posteriorly to the trachea is this muscular tube here, the esophagus. So the esophagus then again is running from the oral cavity through the pharynx and is going to carry food down. So it starts off in the midline and can you see how it shifts to the left a little bit? So it shifts to the left and then passes into, passes through the diaphragm to get to the stomach. And you can see the stomach is over to the left side here. Uh, and look, there's the aorta there. So the aorta is, you know, posterior to the esophagus. And as the arch of the aorta loops around, the aorta is left of the esophagus and then posterior to it. So the aorta, if we take this, oh, we're gonna take it out now. Ooh, if I take the esophagus out, you can see the aorta better. And you can see how the aorta is sending off regular branches, regular arteries as it descends. So we call this part of the aorta the thoracic aorta or the descending aorta or the thoracic descending aorta, whatever you like, because it has an ascending part, an arch and a descending part in the thorax. And if you're looking at a CT transverse section, so a sectional image, a radiograph of the thorax, in some places you'll see the aorta twice. So it's important to be aware of that so that you can recognize it and it's important to be able to name the different parts. Um, so as the aorta descends, it gives off intercostal arteries that are gonna run around the thoracic cage with the ribs. Okay, we've almost done up, this is about it. Take the lungs out then. If we take the lungs out, you can get, a, get an idea of the, the actual shapes of the lungs. Now, do you see how when I took the lungs out, the bulk of the lung, most of the lung here, was actually posterior, wasn't it? So we have the vertebral column running in here. And look, there's this really, really big space posteriorly. And that's where much of the mass of the lung sits. That, that's where much of the volume is. If we take the other lung out, you can see that there's the same deal there. Um, when we open up cadavers and students see lungs for the first time, the most common comment is, wow, they're smaller than I expected. And the second is they don't look as healthy as you'd think because they, because of modern living and pollution and stuff, they get a little bit blackened. Anyway, so the shape of the lung is important and often a bit of a surprise. And you can see the lining of parietal pleura here now, in here a little bit more clearly. Um, oh, here's a vein here. So the veins of the posterior thoracic wall is the, uh, it's the azygos system. We have the azygos and hemiazygos veins on either side. So they're collecting blood largely from the intercostal spaces. And they're actually, see this branch here? This is the azygos vein and it's gonna loop. Where can we see it? Where are we? Oh, there it is there, yeah. So it, what it does is it, it loops over the blood vessels that are going to and from the lungs and the azygos vein enters the superior vena cava. So the blood from the thoracic cage drains into the superior vena cava and into the heart there. So the azygos vein. Um, and then we're starting to see some deep muscles of the back and what have you, but that's about it. Here's the diaphragm and we can see a couple of holes there. So the, the aorta actually runs 
through a gap at the back between the crura, so where the, the diaphragm is anchored, it makes kind of a V-shaped hole, and the aorta runs through there. And then the other two holes are for the inferior vena cava and the esophagus. And then inferior to that, we're in the abdomen. But that's it. Um, those are the structures of the thorax. That's much of the anatomy of the thorax. How did you do? Do you think you could... Um, you could give that talk if you've covered that information before. And if you haven't covered it before, hopefully you have a better understanding of where the lungs sit, the spaces that they fill, where the heart sits, how those things link together, and also of the great vessels. So the great vessels and the airways, those are the other major structures in there. All right. Okay. It's good, the thorax, isn't it? I like it. It's very neat. Very neat. Anyway, right. See you next week. <laughs>